All right, so all robbers is going home to be with the Lord. If you go to our Facebook page, that video is up is out there. It's only maybe three minutes or so, something like that, but it's out there. And uh, as I view as I as I viewed the video, um, I said, "Oh my God!" You know, and I'm listening and I'm saying, "These are the same things that we've been talking about." That as revival breaks out, it's not going to be the who's who of Christendom, of ministry. It's going to be breaking out everywhere, but everybody is not prepared and ready and properly positioned for it. So we know God not talking about everybody. Now, I believe there's going to be so many that's going to feel the impact of it. You're going to see people begin to line themselves up. You're going to begin to see supernatural things. You're going to begin to see the angels of God go on assignment, right? You're going to begin to see things that have already shifted and changed, but you're going to see them shift and change even more. But what we are required to do is to be in a holy place as God's people, as the saints of God, as the believers of God. So listen, it's been long time out for playing church. That day been long gone. And uh, so understand that we're in the world, but we are not of the world. Right? But, but we are recharged. We are re refueled. We are realigned because we have to obey the Great Commission. Yes, amen. But we got to get ourselves together. Right? We got to make sure that we properly, properly position right, as God's people, as God's children. Right? So there is an end time harvest to reap. There's the end time harvest to reap. And so uh, this revival will be on the 2nd of March, March 2nd, 7 p.m. Uh, that's a Friday, Friday, March 2nd, 7 p.m., Saturday, March 3rd, 7 p.m. And uh, then we're uh, looking at Sunday, we'll close it out at the 1030, the 1030 a.m. service. So I don't care, listen, if you got a skateboard your way, huh, put on your, the best running shoes, the best walking shoes you got, Right, and get the step and get the city bus called Uber, you know, called, you know, catch the mega bus if you need to get it. Listen, small things that God get in turn into supernatural things. And so when you begin to understand everything that God ever did, listen, came out of small things. All he said in the beginning was, let there be. He spoke a word. Let there be light. And there was what? There was light. And so understand the move of God will happen with or without us. He's just given us, listen, he's just given us the invitation and an opportunity. Because great moves of God, what God desires to do, will happen with or without us. And God just keep right on going. He'll call some people they won't answer. God, God just go right on down the list and call the next person. I said something to somebody the other day. I said, time waits on no man. And it's going to be a whole lot of people, listen, they're going to be living their life, listen, with the sad memories of a lost opportunity. Sad memories of a lost opportunity. Because a lot of this stuff, listen, we don't get to pick and choose. When it's divinely ordained, when it's divinely orchestrated, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. And then I was leaving out, out of the, from the post office, and ran into a woman of God, you know, and, and, I, and I mentioned to her, first thing came out of my mouth, we start revival, and I don't know the exact day and time, but you coming, but it won't be just a one-shot deal, it's going to be ongoing. And I invited over. I said, we get with you with all of the details and things like that, because I'm telling you right now, God has already ordained who he wants to be here. He's already ordained who he wants to be here. All right, uh, so um, we're finalizing that again, uh, revival, um, March 2nd, 7 p.m., March 3rd, 7 p.m., and then we will conclude it at our 10.30 a.m. service on the 4th, the first Sunday uh, in the month of March. Can I get a good amen? All right, so what I want you to do is, and I'll send you the info and everything out, all right, I want you to tag your friends, your neighbors, your enemies, 
Amen. I want you to invite them. Amen. I want you to share. I want you to share it. Amen. If you're on social media, you're on Facebook. Amen. I want you to share it. I want you to invite it. Man, because so many people have gotten saved. So many people have gotten delivered. So many people have gotten freed, you know, in, in revival meetings. You know, your, your prayer that you're praying for your loved ones. Listen, they might, they might come in here not really even knowing, you know, other than they know they have been invited. Or know that maybe God has been dealing with them. They got something that's, you know, that's going on in their life. And they get in the presence of God and their life is changed forever. Their life is changed forever. Backsliders come home. You know, those that are hurt, those that are wounded, those that are bleeding. You know, that, that come in and say, hey, you know, I've been out and away from God. I need healing. I need deliverance. I need restoration in my life. Uh, and so we're looking for a great move of God. Uh, we're looking uh, for the Holy Ghost to show up, manifest himself uh, in the midst of us. We're looking uh, for uh, miracles, signs, and wonders. Of God to manifest, Amen, in our midst, Amen. And in my in my estimation, my analysis is it already started. <laughs> it's already started. It's all it's already revival. Listen, it's already breaking forth. There's stuff that's already shifted in the atmosphere, where people listen and their their focus and their gaze is upon God. God is dealing with His remnant church. And I'm talking to people, and they're saying the same thing. Matter of fact, I was on Facebook, and I had written some things in reference to, to that, um, that video. If you go there, you'll see it. And then I saw another apostle, another prophet of God, and he was saying almost the same thing. And I didn't go look at the time frames, anything like that. I don't know if his was out first. I, that don't even really matter to me. All I'm saying is, is the Spirit of God is speaking to his people. And his people are coming in on one accord. God's people, the remnant church is coming in with great uni unity and unification. It sparked something. It has set something off. And so what I'm saying, what I'm saying to you is be in the world but not of the world. Let God be your first love. Let God be your priority. Don't let him be your last thought. You got to get in the way of God. You got to make sacrifices and commitments. I, man, I, listen, I used to go to revival meetings, get home four days in the morning, get up and go to work. I know I was in my 20s, but it didn't matter. But I was so hungry for God. There are certain things that are worth you losing a few hours of sleep. It's a price to pay. There are certain things worth you getting up and saying, you know, I'm a little tired today, you know, a little sleepy today. You know, I know more people challenge with certain stuff more than they are. But I promise you that the reward and the blessing of God will outweigh all of that. It will outweigh all of that. And I went on to work and did what I had to do, come home. Yeah, I'm exhausted. Yeah, I'm tired. Now it's time to lay this body down and get some rest. And there's always a time for that. There's always a time. There's a time you got to get, the time you got to gather. Come on here. You know, every, seasons change. And if you get in the season of God, right, you, you, I mean, we've been sowing, we've been sowing, we've been, y'all know we've been sowing, we've been sowing, we've been sowing, we've been planting, we've been planting, right? And we've been watering, we've been watering. Well, we ought to look for increase. We ought to look for harvest. Why wouldn't God start something here? Why wouldn't God? Why wouldn't God? Why wouldn't God? Why not us, God? That means God it can trust somebody. You know, he set his love and his affection and his attention, his face towards his people. And we ought to give God praise just for allowing us to be a part of what he's doing. Amen, somebody. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of what you're doing in the earth realm. Amen. For he has called us to the kingdom, what? For such a time as this. He has called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. Uh, we are going over uh, back into the book of Revelation this morning. Uh, we're slowing it down because I want to uh, talk to you about some things. I want you to see some things, hopefully, clearly. Uh, this is our Food and Fellowship Sunday. But this is also our Youth Sunday uh, as well. And uh, that we can begin to understand some of the things that we have seen, 
some of the things um, that we are seeing, and then some of the things that we will see. Because we have to understand that in any, any, any move of God, there's always a great testing, and there's also always a great opposition. Even coming up upon this re revival, I have been tried on for size all week long. But, but like Paul says, he says, none of these things move me. None of, these thi none of these things move me. Because we have to arm ourselves likewise that if Christ has suffered in the flesh, we're going to suffer as well. And so everything that Jesus did for us to bring us into the place that we are in, that we can walk in newness of life, that we can have life and have life more abundantly. He that knew no sin became sin for us. He laid down his life. He said, don't no man take my life, but I lay my life down and then I can pick it up again. And so everything that he has done for the church, he said to Peter, upon this rock I will build my church and the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. The body of Christ, the believer, the saints of God, that you have given your life over to Jesus Christ. We are a royal priesthood. We are a holy nation. We are God's peculiar people. We have been called out of darkness to walk in this marvelous light. It's the blood bought right. It's our privilege. It's our responsibility because Jesus Christ paid the price for us. And so understand that we have a responsibility. Understand that we have an obligation. Understand that we have to have a commitment. Understand that we have to have a dedication. Understand that we have to live our lives to please and to glorify God. Understand that we must be trained up in the nurture and the admonition of God. Understand that you got to have a word life. You got to have a prayer life. You got to have a praise life. You got to have a worship life. Understand that God is calling you by your name. Understand that the Holy Spirit is working in your life. Understand that the Word of God is working in your life. Understand that God is on your side. Understand that all things are working together for your good because you love God and you are called according to His purpose. Understand that God is doing a new thing in the earth realm. Understand that we are going from faith to faith and from glory to glory by the Spirit of the living God. Understand that God is doing some things in the spirit realm world in your life, in the life of your kids, in the life of your grandkids, in the life of those in your community, in the life of those in your neighborhood, in the life of your co-workers. I'm telling you today, God is moving awesomely. God is moving mightily by His Spirit in the earth realm today. He is the same today as He was yesterday, and He will be forevermore. Will you allow God to do His work in your life, His work in your mind, His work in your spirit, man, and you take care of your physical body, that with long life He'll satisfy us and show us His salvation. And so he's called us to the kingdom for such a time as this. This is an exciting time to be alive. It's an exciting time to be in the body of Christ. We are living in the last days. And God is entrusting us with something glorious. God is entrusting us with something magnificent. God is entrusting us with something awesome. He's entrusting with us something supernatural. We have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power will be of God in out of a, it's a blessing to be in the house of God. It's a blessing to be on the anointed word of God. It's a blessing to be in the midst where the Holy Ghost is working and the Holy Spirit is moving and he's sharing abroad his love towards his people. He says, if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked ways, he said, I will heal from heaven, I will forgive them of their sin, and I will heal their land. We've been praying. Listen, we have been praying. That we have been seeking God. Amen. We have been making sacrifices. Listen, God will honor his word. He is not a man that he should lie or the son of man that he should repent. God will honor his word. He will come through. It is so. It is going to happen. Well, people call it slackness. It is long suffering toward us. That is not God's will that none perish, but that all come to what? That all come to repentance. 
that there's a great awakening that has taken place. That this sleeping giant that is called the church of God, this living organism, listen, is waking it up now. Good God Almighty, and you are a part of that. There's a great awakening that's taking place. There's a great awareness that is taking place. Listen, there's a great intensity that's being manifested. There's a sense of urgency now. That we don't have as much time as we think we have. That the, the time is, as we know it, listen, is winding up. Even if it's just the end of your days that God has given us on the earth realm. It's time to rise up as the people of God and be quickened. Because we're getting ready to have a Holy Ghost from the visitation from the Lord. When God's going to begin to take over our praise service. The Holy Ghost going to take over your worship service. The Holy Ghost going to take over the preached taught word of God. Where it's not going to be your words. But it's going to be the words of the living God. That he want to speak through his holy anointed vessels. That have humbled themselves under God's mighty hand. And he will exalt us in due time. I'm here to tell you today. That the power of God is present to heal. Is present to deliver. Is present to set free. Is present to make whole. I don't care what your problem is. What your issue is. There is absolutely nothing that's too hard for God to do. Give God praise and glory in the house of God. God getting ready to visit his people like never before. That he will begin to touch their hearts in the seat of their emotions. Well, we begin to see extraordinary supernatural things uh, in the earth realm like never before. God's sovereignty, God's omniscience, God's omnipotence, and God's omnipresence uh, is getting ready to be revealed and getting ready to be manifested. So these things are not just happening by osmosis. They're, just, they're, they're, they're happening strategically on God's timetable because God's ways are not our ways. God's thoughts are not our thoughts. As far as the heaven is from the earth, boy, God is bad. And I'm so glad today that God is thinking good things about us, that he has a glorious future that is in store for us. And he begins to let us know of a surety that we can walk in confidence and full assurance of our faith. So we plan with our way before we knew Billy Graham was going home to be with the Lord. Of the day they had designated, and I'm almost about to give out a clarion call to churches and pastors and apostles and everybody across the world that we take if nothing else but Friday night and say, listen, we open up our doors. That's what some people already do. But we open up our doors. Listen, we want God to meet us. We want God to manifest. I don't care if you just have a prayer meeting. Could you not pray with us for one hour? It's so much stuff that's burst out of prayer, burst out of us getting in the presence of God, burst out of us calling upon the name of Jesus, calling upon the name of Jesus. He that calls it upon the name of the Lord shall be delivered, shall be free. We need freedom in our lives, freedom in our minds, freedom Freedom in our home, freedom in our community, freedom in our neighborhoods. Uh, that we need our earth shaking earthquake. Uh, it's not just going to shake up the church. Uh, it's getting ready to shake up the political world as well. Uh, because we're dealing with supernatural manifestations uh, of evil and wickedness. Uh, but we're also dealing with the supernatural power of God. And there's no power that's greater than the power of God. Since I'm flowing down, let me take you over to Acts chapter 3 and verse number 19. Because I received a piece of mail the other day. Uh, you know, as you know, we've been talking about this revival for March 2nd, 3rd, and 4th. And I've had these people that's been trying to get me to do some uh, radio broadcasting, some of this stuff online, some of this stuff on the internet, some of this on the radio waves. And uh, how many know it take money to do stuff? All right. And so, so here's here's the point that I wanted to make. And you know, because I'm, I'm saying, God, I know what you want to do. I know we're in the time frame which you want to do it. You know, an open vision that God has given to me. It's like it's like it's like there's it, it, where God is expediting stuff. It's, it's, it's like where, where, where there's a progressive moving of the spirit and the power of God. It's like it's almost like now. Listen, you pray. It ain't gonna be ten years. It ain't gonna be ten months. It's gonna be where, where we gonna start. We gonna begin to see suddenness like never before. 
We're going to begin to see the Spirit of God manifest in a moment's time. We're going to oh, where, where's the power of God going? Where's the glory of God going? Well, maybe our sins have separated us from our God. And maybe somebody have made up in their minds to repent of their sins, to repent of their evil ways, and say, I need, I want, I desire God more than anything, more than everything in my life. And at that point, I promise you, my God will begin to manifest himself, even if it's in your personal life. You can have revival in your own life. Revival in your own home. Revival in your own mind. Good God Almighty. You can experience the power and the glory of God in your life. And so, you know, you pray over it. You always acknowledge the Lord in all of your ways. Understand that he will direct our paths, right? God will direct our path. We acknowledge the Lord in all of our ways. There's the cause, there's the desire, there's the wanting to do revival. Oh God, okay, God, what you say? Oh God, what you say? But you will know when it's in the spirit. There's a the peace that's the past of all understanding, and you'll know who God sent it, because it ain't about money, it ain't about prestige, it ain't about power, it's about the glory of God, it's about God's people being blessed. Come on here, somebody. It ain't about the who's who. <laughs> it's about who he is. <laughs> Amen. And what God desires to do. So I received this piece of mail the other day. You know what I'm praying? And I'm saying, okay, God, well, you know. It'd be all right to move it a week farther out, daylight saving time. <laughs> it work out a little bit better. You know, how we, how, we, how, how, we, how we try to, you know, persuade God. There's certain things, listen, in this time of season, you ain't persuading God. Some things are already settled in the heavens from the very foundations of the world. That you're not going to change. You just got to get in the flow and the way and what God is desiring to do. That's where the blessing is. That's where the miracle is. That's where the breakthrough is. That's where the elevation is. Come on here, somebody. That's where uncommon favor is. Look, that's where new dimensions are in God. And so I'm, I'm, I hadn't even opened the mail. And uh, I looked at the head. I knew where it came from. But as I read down a little bit farther in the open window, in Acts chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse number uh, 19, Acts chapter 3, and uh, verse number 19, as uh, Peter and uh, John was going up the temple at the hour of prayer, and they healed the lame man. The lame man was healed. And we're going to begin to see these things manifest and, and reemerge in the church of God. Among the people of God. I don't care if it's a tent revival. I don't care if it's a storefront or a cathedral. And so these words, I saw times of refreshing. And on a letter it had change. Times of refreshing and change. From the presence of the Lord. That one was on the letter that I read. And so I put it aside. I put it aside. And uh, I'm going to call this company and I want to talk to the president of the company. They'll say, well, who's calling? I'm going to say, this is the president and CEO of Grace and Truth Global Church. That means this CEO and president want, want to talk to your CEO and president. And we're going to go from there. Because I believe when God favors you, you favor it. I believe that the Holy Ghost, listen, is inspiring you to do something, to say something, to call somebody, that he's already dealt with the people on the other end. I don't care if it's a phone call, a text message, or whatever it is. I believe God has already dealt with those people. Because God has set something up, listen, listen, and, and make sure that your way is made plain and possible before you even go. And he will open up the door for you where you're thinking, Lord, I don't know how we're going to do this, Lord. I don't know how it's going to work out, Jesus. But I'm crazy enough just to believe God. I'm crazy enough just to obey God. I'm crazy enough, listen, to ask. Because we have not because we ask not. And God know my motive for asking is pure, it's clean, it's holy, it's godly, it's for his glory and his kingdom and his honor. So that was on the letter. You might want to write that down for your point of reference. Times are refreshing and change. 
was on that letter. That's what caught my attention because I was about to rip it up and throw it in the recycle box. I said, okay, I know these same people. <laughs> and I saw times of refreshing and change. I said, whoa, God's talking. God's confirming. God's verifying. God's reassuring. Now you got greater confidence and a reassurance of your faith. That we are in God, we're we're in God's time, and when and, and, and when you, whenever you're in God's time, you will have you will have a God time. When you're in God's timetable, but we still got to pray, and we got to pray, and we got to pray some more. We got to intercede. Come on, somebody, we got to fast. Listen, because the enemy is not just gonna let us just you know impede upon his territory without any kind of fighting or war against us. So you got to arm yourself. You can't be in God's house. You can't be serving God. Listen, with a mind thinking that you're not gonna be talked about, persecuted, lied on. That the devil not gonna show up at revival. That the devil not gonna show up when God's getting ready to break out and unleash great power, release His glory in the earth realm. Oh yeah, the enemy is going to manifest himself but he cannot win. He going to try to stop us but you got to know that with God's power we are unstoppable. So times of refreshing and change. Acts chapter 13, the early church, Peter uh, and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer <clears throat> being the ninth hour and it's talking about a certain man that was lame that was carried there at, uh, laid at the gate called Beautiful. And he saw Peter and John get ready to go in the temple, and he was looking for some alms, and they said, silver and gold we don't have, but such as we have. You may not be a great theologian, but such as I have. Because we learned about John, they taught, and they said, these are unlearned, uneducated men, but they recognized that they had real power with God. They said, silver and gold we don't have, man, but such as we have. It says, give out to you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, it says, rise up and walk. All you can give people is what you have. What do you have? What you got in your hand, Moses? All I got, Lord, is a stick and a stutter. Get in well, what you got, what you got, what you, you got to use what God has already given you and assign to your hand. I don't care if all you got is the jawbone of an ass. We getting ready to get us some victory now with this jawbone. We getting ready to defeat some enemies that have come up against us. God have mercy here. It's a lot of stuff that came up against you and fought you and tried to hinder you and attack your mind. God said in this season, you getting ready to get victory if you use what's in your hand if you use what i've given you don't neglect it listen don't count it for nothing god said because i've given it you for a reason i've given you your gifts your talent i bless your mind i want to bless the works of your hand i'm talking to somebody here today it's time to get up and get to moving courage to lead and move out you're not gonna see the end but you gotta get started moving in the direction that god has already come man of you, you got to get some stuff together and set your house in order because God want to set it on fire. He want to set it ablaze. He want to renew your mind. He want to elevate your mind into the next dimension of God. That you're not just looking at the small things, but you're looking at the greatness of God. I know the devil done magnified stuff. He done made it look real bad. He done told you you're going to be like this for the rest of your life. But how many know that the devil is a liar? Yeah, God. God, you coming on up out of this. I don't care if it was dead. I don't care if it looked impossible. You in the season where God is going to turn everything. It seemed like it was impossible. Seemed like it couldn't happen. Looked like it wasn't going to work. It's done fell apart. And there is no rescue. There is no deliverance. There is no help. But God is getting ready with resurrection power to deliver for some people. Now, good Lord, you're darling from the grave. Now, he's getting ready to bring you to another level, another realm in him. This lame man just had expectancy. Hoping to receive something. And mess around and happen upon the right men. Because everybody don't have what you need from God. They got a whole lot of promises. Mm, they talk real good. They got a real good game. It might feel good. 
It might sound good, but there is no manifestation of the promise, and hope deferred is going to make your heart sick. And in whatever God promised, we ought to know that he's well able. Come on here, Abraham. He's well able to perform and to bring the pass. It don't matter how long it takes. You say you've been waiting for a long time, but keep on waiting on the Lord. That's why David said, listen, I would have fainted unless I believed to see the goodness of Y'all don't make me preach it here today. The goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. He says wait. And sometimes you got to keep on waiting and waiting on the Lord and be of good courage. Encourage yourself in God. Because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Yes, yes, yes. Times of refreshing and change that will come from the very presence of God. That he's not going to share his glory with another. This next move of God, ain't no man, ain't no woman, boy or girl going to be able to take credit for it. When you walk in the room, you're going to know God is there. When you hit the grounds, you're going to know God is there. When you make up your mind to go, the Spirit of God is going to begin to prompt and prod you. The Spirit of God is going to begin to excite you. That's going to be a great arising that's going to take place on the inside. He is the great motivator. And the great encourager uh, that God uh, is going to get in the midst of your mind uh, and say, go ahead, uh, go ahead, I double dog dare you. Uh, go ahead uh, and test me. Uh, go ahead and try me. Uh, go ahead and prove me, uh, saith the Lord. Uh, and I'm getting ready to open up the windows in your mind, uh, the windows in your finances, uh, the windows in your body, uh, the windows in your ministry, uh, the windows in your church. Uh, God, I'm getting ready to open up the floodgates of, of heaven and the, over my people uh, that cried out to me uh, by way of uh, their affliction. Uh, I'm getting ready uh, to deliver them. Uh, they don't know it yet. Uh, they don't fully understand it yet. Uh, they didn't abandon their faith. Uh, they say, Lord, it ain't no help for me now. Uh, but God said, if you get in my presence, uh, there's help for you. Uh, if you lift your hands uh, in my presence, uh, there's release for you. Uh, you ought to lift your hands right now uh, and give God some praise. Uh, give God some glory for your exodus uh, because these Egyptians and uh, that you see today, you're not going to see them anymore. That problem, that storm, that test, you're coming out on the other side with glory that God is getting ready to reveal because your light afflictions were never worthy, were never worthy to be compatible, to be comparable with the glory of God that he desired to release in your life. Tell somebody, I got the capacity, I got the capacity now, baby. I got the capacity now, Lord. Yes, you can pour on in the wine. Ah, into this new vessel, in the made up mind, this Holy Ghost mind in God. Times of refreshing and change that's coming from the presence of God. Of people that love God. This man received healing, deliverance, because he dared to believe and trust God. Peter and John, the servants of God, if you exercise yourself in what God gave you, you'll see the miraculous begin to take place. If you lay hands on the sick, God says they shall recover. Cast out devils in his name, drink any deadly thing. He says it will not harm you. And so the lame man is healed. The apostles are preaching the word of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ. Verse 18 says, but those things which God foretold by the mouth of his prophets, that the Christ would suffer, he has fulfilled. And then he says, uh, repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out in the times what, of refreshing, so that the times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Could we be our own hindrance in a move of God? Could you be your own hindrance in the move of God in your own personal life? Can you take ownership of that? Can you hold your mirror up? Can you repent before God and say, as me, O oh Lord? 
that's been in my own way. It ain't been nobody else. It ain't been my mama. It ain't been my daddy necessarily, God. My husband, my wife, my brother, my sister, none of the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Could it be me that have been in my own way, God? Because I haven't repented of stuff that you know that's on the inside. God knows all of his people. We are the church of God. You are the church of Jesus Christ. If you are born again, if you are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ, you belong to him. And he knows everything there is to know about us. Somebody ought to say, search me, Lord. Mm -hmm. Cry that one. Pray that one. Search me, Lord. If you find anything that's in me that's not like you, deliver me. It's me, oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. Every great revival comes through repentance and prayer. And people get in the presence of God for real and not playing games and getting out of them everything, everything, everything that's not like Jesus. So that when Satan comes, he don't find nothing in us. He come to try to sabotage the move of God. He begin to send demons. He begin to see send witches. He begin to see send warlocks, especially in this region of the world, in the state, in the country in which we live. But they gonna come face to face with the power of God. Well, witches gonna come in and say, "What must I do to be saved?" I'm not just teaching and preaching to you my own mind today. I'm telling you what God has already willed. What God has already ordained. It's going to be some preachers that come in and say, man, I've messed up my life. I've messed up some people. It's time and it's high time for me to repent and get it right with God. Before it is eternally too late for me. The warlocks coming in, the voodoo workers, the hoodoo workers, they that would try to curse a move of God and the plan of God. They will have an encounter with God. The sorcerers, the illnesses of our day are going to have to bow down to the power of God. I wish I had a witness in this house today. Good God Almighty, because every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ, he is Lord of Lords. He is King of Kings. This stuff that's going on in people's lives, they ain't going to be able to help it. When they get in the presence of God, it's going to be something that's going to push them. It's going to be something that's going to get a hold to them. They ain't going to even know what's happening to them, but they're going to rise up. They're going to fall on their face and say, Lord, I'm so sorry. God going to allow them to see themselves. The Holy Ghost is going to be so strong and so powerful. He going to deal with them. He going to talk with them. Everywhere they turn, they ain't going to get no rest. They're not going to get any peace. He going to wake them up in the midnight hour because God has a calling upon their lives. And it's Time that God will is obeyed and is carried out. Why sit here and die when you can live and declare the glory and the works of God? It's time to change. We need refreshing from the presence of the Almighty God. So he said that your sins would be blotted out. And that times of refreshing, where God will begin to restore and heal damaged lives. We begin to see divine healing, that the Son of Righteousness has already risen with healing in his wings. We'll see real renewal where God's people is concerned. We'll see real revival, real awakening. We'll see the reemergence uh, of the evangelistic anointing uh, and the power gifts uh, of, of working of miracles and divine healing that will begin to manifest in the earth realm again. That the apostolic authority has already been reestablished in the church of God. The prophetic voice uh, has already been reestablished uh, in the church of God. The evangelist anointing uh, has to be reemerged uh, in the body of Christ. Uh, there's some power Pastors have already been established in God that are feeding God's people with knowledge and with understanding. There are some teachers of God that are teaching sound doctrine, healthy doctrine where God is concerned. But the evangelist got to rise up. You got to know the God's called you to. If he's called you to go into the hedges and the highways and compel men to come, that we got to do the work of an evangelist. It's high time. Tell somebody. God ready to refresh you. 
God ready to refresh you. He's ready to refresh you. He's ready to refresh you. You know how you go on your computer or your phone is acting up, is acting crazy. It ain't running right. You got to hit the refresh button. We need you to straighten up in here. We need to be able to access some information. We need to be able to go somewhere. Tell somebody it's time to hit your refresh button, baby. Yeah, that's stale bread. Yeah, it's been stale too long. God ready to refresh it. You need fresh matter from God. You need fresh word from the Holy Ghost. You need a reviving down to your soul. Your mind got to come on alive. You got to renew it in the word of God. Somebody got to represent their bodies as a living sacrifice that's holy and acceptable unto God, which is a reasonable service. It's awakening and quickening that's getting ready to take place already in the church of God. It's hot time to get yourself together. God have mercy today. Jesus, we need your mercy. We need your grace. We need your anointing to manifest in our lives. In the name of Jesus, it ain't the devil. It's just my mic came unscrewed. Some people want to put everything on the devil. It ain't the devil. That little button right there screws around about 20 times. I don't know how it got all the way back around to where it want to come off, but that's what happened to it. It's time, somebody. Extraordinary things. Getting ready to manifest. That's why a real preacher, he don't need no music. He don't need nobody to hype him up because it's the anointing of God that begin to make all the difference in their lives. You ought to give God praise that you're able to sit under a pure anointing, a pure presence a pure delivery of God's word. There's something stirring on the inside of God's people like never before. Somebody saying, God, a damn is just not going to do me this time. I need total saturation in the Holy Ghost of God. It's time to wake up. It's time to wise up and get everything right with God. It's time to cast all of your cares upon him because the Lord careth for you and I. He says to repent though. Jesus came repenting. John came preaching repent. For the what? The kingdom of heaven it, what? it is at hand. And so these times of refreshing come from the presence of God. But there are also prerequisites for us seeing the manifestation of, of what God has promised. That he would touch our hearts. That we would understand <laughs> That we have to go after God like never before. That we begin to understand that the soil soweth the word, but it has to be sown in the good soil of our heart. We understand that in these times that we got to gird up the loins of our mind and get ourselves right and stay right with God. It's time for us as the people, as a community, as a living organism that call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to make no provision for our flesh. It's time for us to lay aside every weight and the sin that do us so easily beset us. Come on here, somebody. Hey, God. And confess our faults and know that he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us of all unrighteousness. Times of refreshing that come from the very presence of God. So this stuff is not manufactured by man. It's not manifested by man. Man is just an instrument and a tool that God uses. Our need for a fresh touch from God. Our need for fresh oil from God. Our need for a new anointing from God. That we will really begin to know and understand who God really is. That he is not a myth. He is not a fairy tale. That people are still calling right, wrong, and wrong, right. But understand that it's the truth of God's word. It's just going to set us free. That we have to prepare ourselves. We have to position ourselves for a move of God. And so in the book of Revelation, God had a lot to say to these seven churches of Asia Minor which is modern-day Turkey. Modern-day Turkey. And it, listen, just because you gave your life over to the Lord 20 years ago, don't mean that you're in the same state that you was when you got saved. There's a whole lot of people that's missing God by a country mile. And so John the Revelator began to address these seven churches. 
And these are not his words. They're the words of Jesus Christ. It's the prophecy of the Lord himself. That he gave and signified by his angel unto John things that must shortly come to pass. In different ages and phases of the church, it has experienced and it has encountered a lot of those things. And we are today in the day in which we live. So we have to know the time and the season like the sons of Issachar. We can have our heads stuck in the sand and like stuff ain't happening. There's stuff happening around us all the time. Where the church and the love of many have grown cold. Where, where Jesus talked about many will we, we, be deceiving each other and, and lying on each other. You know, it, it, it's just horrible stuff that we are seeing. Where we see you know, kids killing their mothers, mothers killing their kids. We see seeing murder at an all-time high. We see seeing idolatry at an all-time high. We see seeing the worship of things at an all-time high. The worship of the created thing more than the creator. And God destroyed whole cities. Because of idolatry. That's why he says, I have no other God before me. That's why you got to search yourself and make sure God is anything before you. You got to search that God is anybody before you. You got to say, where am I, God? You start asking God to search you. He started to reveal and show you you. Show us us. And that's one of the hardest things for humans. For you to really see the error of your ways. The error of our ways. Because change is one of the most uh, things that we resist with every, seem like fi a fiber of our being and our minds are fighting, is resisting change. But anytime you get in the presence of God, you ought to, you ought to want change. You ought to desire change. You ought to embrace change. You ought to not want to be the same, listen, the day as you was yesterday. You ought to see yourself stronger and wiser and growing and maturing and the mistakes of your past that you got to tell yourself, I'm not going to make those mistakes again because I don't want to keep having what setbacks uh, because every time I do the comebacks, uh, they get just a little bit harder because time is not on my side. And at a certain point, you understand that you're not just fighting yourself. You're fighting against demon power and generational curses and demons that come to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he's addressing these churches head on. It ain't a whole lot. Let's play around with it. No, it's let's get to the point because the time is short. Listen, I'm telling people, listen, time is short. And one of the only things that's left, according to Matthew 24, is really the, the preaching of the gospel of Jesus Christ to every nation. And Jesus said, these things are just the beginning of sorrows, wars, and rumors of war, nations against nations. Economic collapse. Look, look at all the stuff that we're seeing. Earthquakes in divers places. Tornadoes. They was anticipating a tsunami just not too many months ago on the west coast out where when Mexico having all those earthquakes. But there was no tsunami watch. And we know that the world is going to be destroyed by water but fire next time. So you don't got to be worried about the world getting flooded out like water in the days of Noah. It's going to be burnt up. And everything that's not like God is going to be burnt up with it. And so we got to get ourselves positioned in God as a people, as a church. If you're saying that you're born again, that you're a child of God, you ought to show some sign. You ought to act like it, live like it, walk like it, and please do not rebel against God's word. Rebel against it. Re listen, Lord, help me here. Don't rebel against God's word. Don't rebel against God's word. Rebel against stupid, crazy laws. Thank you, Lord. I almost said it another way. But, you know, but don't rebel against God's word. Because the government crazy, but he ain't bigger than God. Got a whole lot of stuff out there, but they ain't bigger than God. And we are his ambassadors. We are his agents in the earth realm. So we can't just sit around idle and just, I, I, we don't see nothing. We got to at least pray according to the word of God that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all righteousness and all godliness. Listen, you got to pray for wickedness in high places. 
Not only in the church world, but also in the world in which we live. Our government and nations around the world. We got to pray for the mind of these people, man. They can snap. Boy, North Korea can start sending missiles over here. We might stop some of them. But I promise you, we ain't going to stop all of them. Only God can divinely intervene and save this nation like he already had because of his great mercy. And godly men and women is still in the earth realm. Because y'all know as well as I do, we got a whole lot of enemies. And there's something we made that might have should have never been made. Because the love of money is still the root of all kinds of evil. And so when we as the people of the church finds itself outside of the position of what God has willed and God ordained, he always calls for repentance. He always calls for repentance. To repent therefore. And even if Paul said, repent therefore, repent and be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and you shall receive what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. So it's some folk need to do a whole lot of repenting, run around here taking communion, and you got hell in your heart. You mess around around here, be sick, sleep, or dead. So wouldn't it be befitting that he would address the church, the body of Christ, the people of God? It's not the building. Brick, mortar, carpet, steel. They bulldoze this down. And it, it ceased to exist. But we are eternal beings. And we got to spend eternity somewhere. And so that's why you got to know now that you are in the real church of God. Not just giving a preacher your hand. But have you really believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ? Because John is addressing the, not only the seven churches of his day, but he's also addressing the church today as we know it as well. Because we in here. And we look around us and we read Revelation 1, 2, 3. We in, people are in, we are in here. And some say no, it's the different time frames of the church over years and now we are Finally down here in the church of the Laodiceans, that lukewarm church. You know, that just rather just sit on the sidelines and let, let everything just work itself out. They call them activists. They call them protests. You know, Paul disputed. He was in defense of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now nobody don't want to get their hands dirty. Y'all see these plants down here? This one is fake. This one right here? It's just as real as real can get. You got a lot of dirty lives and a lot of dirty minds that will hinder revival and a move of God. So what John is saying is the Lord, the Lord sees every person that's in the body of Christ, not only corporately but also individually, God sees them. He sees the dirt in their lives. God help me here. He sees the dirt that they have done. He sees the dirty lives that they have lived and they also are living. But he commanded all men everywhere to repent because God is not weak in that sin anymore. There is a day of judgment that's getting ready to take place and we want to make sure that we escape the judgment of God. As a believer, as the people of God, the world is the world, the devil is the devil. But if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the sinner and the ungodly appear? You don't want to be in any one of those categories. You want to make sure that you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. That you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit. And that you are renewing your mind. That your salvation is secure in God. That you have not backslid. You have not walked away from God. Even in your heart. Even in your mind. David messed up and God had to send David who? A Nathan. For him to come to himself and say, oh, it's me, oh God. Purge me. Cleanse me. Deliver me. From all so presumptuous sin in my life. That I need to get myself together. I need to get myself right with the Lord now, today. And this is where the church is. Just lukewarm, just right there in the middle. Don't know whether we need to go right or left. And he said to Joshua, don't turn to the right or the left. Here you're going to make your way prosper. You're going to have good success. I'm telling you in this next move of God, you're going to have to have some holy boldness. 
And the apostles prayed and said, Now, Lord, behold a threatness. But they said, Grant unto your servant that with more boldness we may preach your word with authority. In this next move of God, listen, you're going to have these mammy whammy kissy wissy preachers that kiss, kiss up to the news media and kiss up the politicians and mess over God's people. Compromise their position, false teachers and apostates that cause God's people to go off into sin and error and perversion by the lifestyle that they live in. That people begin to think, well, if they do it, maybe I can do it. No, you can't. No, you should not. I don't care if Archbishop number 10,000 or whoever they is doing it. You don't got no business disobeying God's word. Now, let's look a little closely at these seven churches. So they're located in Asia Minor, which is uh, present-day Turkey. And a lot of this region was only accessed by boat, by boat. You know, merchant shipmen, seamen. So it was like it was like a trade route. You know, it, it, it was like an import export business. You know, big huge shipping containers taking goods and merchandise. So it was like a shipping route of trade, import export business. So it was located in like a circuit. You know, like a surrounding city, surrounding towns. You know, some maybe 60 miles, 80 miles separation. You know, so they weren't really necessarily right on top of each other. But yet, God understand, understanding and knowing that they would need to get some encouragement. So here now John is on, been exiled onto the Isle of Patmos where they, you know, put criminals. Right? You ready to go to prison for the Lord? You ready to go to jail for God? And we're not just talking about a civil rights movement. Uh, we're talking about standing up for the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ. Are you ready to die for what you believe? Keep on living and that day is coming. We say, oh, well, not in America. It, it's coming. America has become a melting pot. Almost like Rome, whatever you feel like doing, whatever makes you happy, go ahead and do it. And now you got lawmakers that are inspired by demon power. Not to mention Hollywood and the film industry and the music industry. And I'm not saying all of them are wicked, but I'm just saying there's spiritual wickedness in a whole lot of high places. And if the church is asleep, well, how are we going to warn the world? How are we going to help the world? How are we going to help each other if you sleep? In me to rock a bye, baby, in the tree. I don't just rock them to sleep with things and goods. Right? They so, they, they, they so into materialism stuff. You know, the prosperity gospel, the messed up folk. Don't mean God don't want you to have stuff. He don't want stuff to have you. That you, that you worshiping things more than you worshiping God. Things and stuff. Somebody say, hey, preacher, pastor, you, you ought to get you one of these cars. I don't want them. And what you want? I want to be dead free except my house. Why? Because I got freedom of movement. Now, you're going to buy me one, pay for it, bring it over here, and we good. I'll pay for the insurance, and I'll gas him up. Just bring me uh, the title deed, and we're going to be all right because we got an end-time harvest to reap. You know? I'm not saying you shouldn't have nice things. I'm talking about me. I'm just, I'm just talking about me. It ain't nothing I want, at least at this present time. Now, if God bring it, it's all good. But we ain't starting no revival for stuff and things and materialism. That is not our motivation. We ain't prophesying no houses, no cars, and no revival meeting. If you go to work on a job, go buy you a car. You want to upgrade your house? Go upgrade your house. Because he already promises the one to supply all of our needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Now, we will tell you to be a good student of your finances. That you don't own nothing. And you brought nothing here, you ain't going to take nothing with you. And that you have to give an account to God for how you handle your body and your money and the call that he has on your life. So these seven churches, number one, Ephesus. I'm coming in, number one, Ephesus. Number two, Smyrna. Number three, Pergamon. 
Number four, Thyatira. Number five, Sardis. Number six, Philadelphia. And number seven, Laodicea. Laodicea. These seven churches of Asia Minor, modern day Turkey. You say, okay, well, let us uh, find ourselves in Scripture. He that have ears to hear, let him do what? Let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say unto the churches. So if you read just from Revelation 1 to the end of Revelation 3, you're going to cover all of this. All right? So let me, let me get in my Bible. I'm going to Revelation chapter 1. Because you can't be scared of this. If nothing else, you ought to be repentant and say, oh, Lord, oh, holy day. Because when you start really uh, talking about what's coming on this earth, you don't want to be here. You don't even want to be here in a real good war. Not unless the end times of the judgment and the wrath of God being poured out. Because we are still in this dispensation of grace. Hmm. Well, we're coming upon a time in God's timetable. And it's going to be very difficult and very challenging for a lot of people. And the body of Christ has to be unified on one accord. Because I might need to come to your house and eat. You might need to come to my house and eat. You might, listen, have to get out your house to come live at my house. I might have to get out of my house to come to your house. See, some of these are false seasons is selling people these, these false roof tickets. And it ain't true. The church, listen, was so close-knit together, they broke bread from house to house. You know, but two or three are gathered together. My name is said, there am I in the midst. When the economy fell in 2006, 7, 8, listen, it affected everybody. So don't act like, oh, you're so saved because you got so much, I got so much faith in God that nothing it can ever happen to me. You crazy. Help me preach it, baby, yes. You're not thinking realistic. Because you can go to work tomorrow and not have a job. And a lot of people working paycheck to paycheck anyway. So, you know, two, three weeks out. You, you, listen, you, you could be set outdoors. You say the foreclosure people coming away. They might give you three, four, five months, six months. Who knows? Whatever. They can come the next day and tell you, that, yep, time to go. Time to go. And see, for whatever reason, the church of God has allowed itself to be so separated and so divided. Because we can't even hardly get along with each other. And we're looking at the world talking about, oh, that's a shame. Y'all look at yourself and say, that's a shame. They can't even break bread together. You got the same Holy Ghost? I got the same Holy Ghost? Well, what's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? Even if you got issues in your life, we should be helpless one of another. We shouldn't be condemning or condescending upon each other, right? But if you refuse my help, well, that's a whole different issue. I tried to help you. I tried to pull you out of the mud. I tried to get you to see the light. I tried to get you to be reconciled to God. I tried to bring healing and wholeness in your life. I preached the word. I taught the word of God. You, ain't, you ain't, Listen, in time, you ain't going to find me. You ain't going to be able to come and say, you're going to beat that preacher. <laughs> he should have told us the truth. Now, you might find some of them that are going to be still here. And then, you know, they might need a good whipping. You know, whip them, then repent. That they didn't tell you the truth. Uh, and then get right with God so you can, you know, you can, you can get out of here. But the church finds itself, a different church of different ministries, maybe not any particular one. Maybe not any particular one, but these were individual churches. Individual churches. All right, so let me go over here to <coughs> chapter 1, excuse me, <coughs> of Revelation. I always want to read you this in verse number 3, 1 and 3. Blessed is he who reads and those who what? Hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written in it. For what? The time is what? The time is near. Don't be looking at it because it was written way back then and the time still ain't near. Because, listen, uh, a day with, uh, one day with the Lord is in a thousand years and a thousand years is at one, as one day. Don't get, don't get confused now. God is patient. God is long-suffering. And uh, that's why we got to maintain our faith in God. That's why Jesus said, when I come, said, I find faith on earth. How the enemy is deceiving so many people not to continue to believe and have faith in the God of the universe. 
and just walk away from him. Trouble coming in life, stuff happening to them, you know. Don't go their way, they get mad, they get upset, they get fit, they get hurt, whatever. They not only walk away from the four walls, they walk away from God in their mind. As though they don't believe in the judgment or the, even the existence of God. Only the fool that said in his heart that there is no God. But know that God is the just rewarder of those that diligently seek him. Oh God, help me here. I got so much to say. All right, so he says in verse 3 again, blesses what? He who reads. I don't care if you don't understand it. What did it say? It said, blesses he what? That reads. Just read it. Because there's going to be something that's going to be helpful for you or something that will be brought to your attention in reference to it, right? Because the whole New Testament, Acts all the way through, he's talking to the church. He ain't talking to the world. We try to bring the world in under the of, of, of some laws and, and guidelines of God's word. Listen, that they, they can't even be held to because they not, haven't been regenerated. So you can expect the heathen to be a heathen. But you ought to expect the child of God, listen, to be righteous. Instruments in the hands of the almighty God. Because our nature has changed. We don't have the same crave. We don't have the same desire or longing for wicked things or evil things or be rebels against God or be haters. So how can you love, love, say you love God and you hate your brother? All right, let's go over here. Bless thee that what reads. And also those who, who hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things what, that are written in it for what the time is near. So he says in verse 4, John to the seven churches which are in Asia. He says, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, the ruler over the kings of the earth. To him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. And has made us kings and priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Then it says in verse 7, Behold what? He is coming with clouds, and every eye will see him. Even they who what? Pierced him. Boy, that's something right there. Because you know they've been long dead and whatever, but they're going to still see him. Because the sea going to have to get up the dead that was in him. Everybody been murdered, killed, buried. They're going to have to get up again. It says, and all of the tribes of the earth shall what? Will mourn because of him, even so, amen. He says, I'm the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. That is the law of double mention. Who is, who was, and who is to come. So his return is imminent. His return will happen. All right, so he's coming again in the clouds. Every eye going to see him. Every tongue confess, every knee will bow. So you're going to bow now or bow later. All right, so here's John. He said that he was, uh, John, your brother and companion, verse 9, in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was on the island that is called Patmos for the word of God. See how God speaks to you in some of the most unusual places? You want to be all kosher and everywhere? This man is on the island of Patmos. You know, isolated, in prison. Maybe God need to isolate some people. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're like God done cocooned us. Butterfly breaking out now, baby. Now you can behold some beauty when you've gone through the struggle and the, and the challenge of life. So he says in verse 10, I was what? In the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia. To Ephesus, to Smyrna, to Pergamos, to, to Thyatira, to Sardis, to Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice that spoke with me. And every turn, I saw seven golden lampstands. And in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like, ooh, the Son of Man. Clothed with a garment down to the feet and girded about the chest with a golden band. How many know that's the Lord himself? He's always in the midst of his people. His head and hair were white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like a flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, and as refined in a furnace, uh, his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword, and his countenance was like the sun shining in his strength. 
That's the glory of God. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And as the keys of Hades are hell and death, write the things which you have seen, and the things which are, and the things which shall take place after this. The mystery, here we go, of the seven stars which you saw at my right hand and the seven golden lampstands. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches or the ministers of the seven churches and or some say both that each church has a real angel as well as a minister or a servant leader that's over that house. Y'all with me here? We're going to teach you a little bit, break it down just a little bit and we'll close and eat some food. Is that all right? Hear what John is saying. The seven stars which you saw. So here's what I'm saying to you. Just read it. You may not understand everybody, everything about it, but a lot of it that God wants you to know, he break it down so plain. You say, somebody say, oh, what are those seven stars? Uh, uh, what are those seven golden lamps stand? Well, he's telling you. He says, the mission of the seven stars. Which you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lamps stand. The seven stars are the angels of the seven churches. Here's one thing I've said. I believe each church, each believer has an angel. That's a sign to them. We know, I think in Acts chapter 12, Peter had one when Herod had put him in prison. I believe each one of us has a warring angel. I also believe each one of us has a messenger angel. That's my persuasion. Believe what you want, but you know you at least got one. That's why you're still alive, probably. And you know you have the Word, and you know you have the Holy Ghost. But those angels are on assignment for us. That they begin to hearken to the voice and the words of our mouth. They begin to do battle and war on our behalf. When it's stuff that the enemy tried to work, because we know there is demon influence. We know there's a third of the angels that, that was kicked out of heaven with Satan, these wicked angels, and we know we don't wrestle just against flesh and blood, according to Scripture. That's as far as I'm going with that. So we know there are good angels, and we know there are evil angels. We know Michael, we know Gabriel. <laughs> All right, we know there are seraphim, the cherubims. But the angels. So he says, the seven stars are the angels of the seven churches, and the seven lampstands which you saw, he says, they are the seven churches. All right? Now, again, these seven churches, they were uh, located uh, uh, you know, for, on a sea route, and uh, they was visited by Paul like uh, a circuit. And we know that when Paul was leaving Ephesus, he called uh, for the uh, Ephesian elders. I think it's, that's Acts chapter 20. He called for the Ephesian elders uh, and began to uh, minister to them and talk to them about things that would happen after his departure. Right? And so Paul was preparing them for some of these events that would happen to the churches. He was. And we have to be prepared a prepared people, not only for the coming of the Lord to go and be with the Lord, but prepared to live a responsible, light shining and godly life here on this earth. That we would not be deceived. See, that's Acts chapter 20. How Paul exhorted and encouraged the Ephesian elders. He said, after my departure, grievous wolves shall enter in among you. And then he said, the son that's going to listen, that's going to be in the house, that's going to show their true colors. Everybody that said they're with you, they ain't with you. Everybody that said they're for you, they're not for you. And Jesus said, by this day, you know that you are my disciples. What? By love. Love is going to help aid and support you. Now, that don't mean that, you know, it, it, an abusive kind of way. Oh, come on here, somebody. But he was warning them. And so John is talking to the seven churches. Number one is Ephesus. Which is the loveless church. And it was also the capital of Asia Minor. Ephesus. 
But it was the church where Jesus said that, listen, you have left your first love. You have gotten your priorities out of alignment. That I am, am and should be the most important thing in your life. I am. We can't allow anything to mesmerize us so. You know, a dangle before us, the bait of Satan, the entertainer that we love more than we love God. No thing or nobody you should love more than you love God. If it or them is pulling you away from God, you better know that that's not God. They ought to be leading you to God, not away from God. I ain't even talking scripture, I'm just talking common sense. It or them ought to be leading you to God. You shouldn't get a car, God bless you with a new car, and we don't see you no more for six months. God will bless you with a new home and we don't see you for three months. I'm just saying. If it pull you away from God, I'd rather get it up or them up. Because God is way more important than it or them. All right, Ephesus. This loveless church, is that you have abandoned, you have left your first love. They did that themselves. God didn't do it, right? Smyrna, uh, all right, Smyrna is the, is the persecuted church. Uh, and we know that with great tribulation we shall enter the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God. So they suffered great poverty and also martyrdom. A lot of them was killed. But it was a great city, uh, you know, of, of harbors. Uh, you know, out here we, you know, have the port. You know, like, a, like port cities, trading, commerce, marketplace, persecuted church, and they suffered poverty and martyrdom. So it means that you either stand for something or you fall for anything. Y'all still with me here? The persecuted church. So persecution, listen, it can come and will come. We just got to be ready for it. So we have the church of Ephesus, left the first law. We have the church of Smyrna, who is this persecuted church that has suffered great poverty. But Jesus said, I know your works. He said, I even know your poverty. God know when you, when you he know you with your broke self. If you're broke, you ain't got nothing. But listen, why, why we always think about just natural poverty? If some people so spiritually bankrupt, it make you cry. So spiritually impoverished in their lives. And that because you don't have a lot of stuff of natural means, just make sure you're rich in God. Because some people think their riches are saving from anything and everything. Just as long as I got enough money. You know, and they're bragging the boast about where they live and what they drive and how much money they make. So a whole lot of stuff money came by. Your marriage failing. You got overextended in debt. Your kids acting crazy. You ain't got enough money. That's the job for Jesus and the Holy Ghost. All right. So this church of Smyrna, uh, this persecuted church. Uh, and uh, so he says, and these things says, the first and the last, in reference to uh, Smyrna. I know your works, tribulation, and poverty. He says, but you are rich. Why? Because you can be rich in God. And I know the blasphemy of those who say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. He says, do not fear those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of y'all in prison. And you will be what? Tested. And you will have tribulation ten days. He will be faithful unto death. And what? And you will be given a crowd of life. So there's some stuff you got to do and go through. And God ain't going to deliver you out of it. So stop crying. Stop being a baby about it. Gird up the loins of your mind. All right. Now, this church of Pergamum. Church of Pergamum. Is this compromising church. And I, how have we seen that? And we see some of these elements right, in our churches and ministries and people even to this day. We see some of these elements. So Pergamon is a compromising church mixed with all kind of false teaching, all kind of doctrine. Where people tell you what you want to hear. Teachers have an itch in ears. I'm teaching better than you saying amen. Pergamum. Compromising church. 
Won't stand for nothing. And if you compromise, listen, you compromise your life with sin, listen, it's going to take you farther than you want to go. It's going to cost you more than you want to pay. It's going to keep you longer than you want to stay. Make no mistake about it. And you'll be trying to get out and find out you can't get out. I ain't always been saved. Listen, Scripture says to know the depths of Satan as they speak. It's some workings of the devil you don't want to know. It's some degradation of sin and bondage and wickedness and perversion. You don't want to go. You want to stay as far away from it as you possibly can. Some ask me, say, hey, preacher, when you got saved, you just ran away and you got, a, you got away. I said, listen, all I need was a glimpse, man. Yeah, a glimpse. I don't want to ever go to prison. I don't ever want to go to jail. I don't ever want to go to hell. I don't want my life to be snuffed out prematurely. People are dying in the streets, man. I saw my friends and relatives leave here way too young. And we see it today. Because people will compromise their position. You know what's right, do right. Don't be compromising the word of God for nobody. I don't care who it is. I don't care if it is the, your great apostle. Mm, I have a bishop of my soul. Last I checked, his name was Jesus. I have an author in the finish of my faith. Last time I checked, his name was Jesus. All right, Pergamum. This compromise the church and to the angel of the church and program is right. These things says he who has what? The sharp two-edged sword. He said, I know your works and where you what? Dwell, live, abide, reside. He says where well, Satan's throne is. Oh, my God. Somebody say, oh, my God. You talk about a horror movie and story. Where Satan lives and abides. You talking about Chucky. The bride of Chucky. You in Chucky in them house. Can you imagine the pressure? I've had people walk past me and I feel demon power. And the Holy Ghost stir up and start praying. Immediately, I'm going to tell you what happened to me. I stopped, the Holy Ghost stirred, I started praying in the spirit. And you can feel them afar. Oh, it's really like a force. It's real. It is. It's, it's, it's like a floor, force. It's like something that's just kind of moving toward like a big black dark cloud. Of evil and wickedness. You know it's something in there that ain't clean. And the Holy Ghost just rise up, you know, that defense system. But when you pray in the Spirit, right, you're praying to God. And I've had that encounter many times. But when Satan see this, where he rules, where he reigns. And a lot of churches have been made that way. Because they have got in, they've got in bed with Satan and they did like what he said to Jesus, all this is what I'll give you if you will fall down and worship me. And they've compromised themselves. And so what Satan see this, all uh, this false teaching, all this false doctrine, uh, this compromise in church, uh, places of, of idol worship, the worship of Diana, uh, goddess Diana, all, all this old idol uh, worship. All right, and he says, and you hold fast my name and do not deny my faith. Even in the days of Antipas was my faithful martyr who was killed uh, among you where Satan dwells. He said, but I have a few things against you because you have there that those that hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before what? The children of Israel. To eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. This stuff is natural now. That we got to be careful of that we don't pollute and defile our temples. And get off in any kind of idolatry that's worshiping anything other than God is idolatry. And so we have, you know, people saying it's all right to do this, it's all right to do that. You know, and the people saying, well, the preacher did, I'm going to do it too. No, the devil is a lie. You can have as many concubines as you want. I don't want none. You can have ten wives as you want. I don't need but one. That one is enough. In good ways. Godly ways. Thank you, Jesus. And this immorality is just everywhere. We ain't going to finish this. It's all right. And it's just everywhere in the church. And people just doing and do, taking their bodies and think they can do anything with them. Immorality of all kinds, shapes, forms, and fashion. And you're going to start reading over in the first Corinthians, second Corinthians, you'll start seeing when well, well, young men was even sleeping with their, with their uh, stepmamas and carrying on. 
And Paul said they need to be taken out of here with that foolishness. They need to be put out in the church with that foolishness. Because there's certain things that, listen, these young people don't need to see, hear, or even know about as they grow up. But if we put it before them, don't be getting mad and talking about, well, why are they doing that? You know, you cussing, now they cussing. Why you? Because they heard you. Sexual immorality, sexual impurity that people begin to live in and act like it's normal. It ain't normal. That's all I'm telling you. And at a certain point, you will have to give an account to God. And then at a certain other point, listen, you get connected to a harlot, harlot and whoredoms. I'm closing right here. Harlot and whoredoms. Where the church is concerned, you got problems coming. Church become a whole house. You know, pastors become pimps and prostitute God's people, spiritually and naturally. So these churches had issues, they had problems, and well, we have issues and we have problems as well, and we know that, but we got to address them. We can't just act like they don't exist and not deal with them and not repent and get ourselves right with God. I mean, if you messed up, admit you messed up. Hey, I messed up. If I messed up, listen, I'm like, hey, man, I messed up, man. Church might be empty. We might have to close the doors down. You know, I'm still going on with God. I messed up. I repented. Yeah, what else do you want me to do? I sit down. What else do you want me to do? You know, but when you get arrogant and pride, and you don't want no accountability, you don't want nobody telling you nothing to do, well, you're going to be suffering from some stuff. And the chest of the Lord, listen, I ain't, we don't have enough oil to put on you for that. We could bathe you down and go get some Crisco and that still ain't going to be enough. Because you got to repent before God. There's some people that are going to just be, tra- you get, listen, it ain't just coming in. Say, I'm coming in, I'm coming back. You got to do business with the Lord. You come and say, hey, Pastor, I'm back. Okay, that's one thing. I'm glad you're back in here, but are you back with him? That's, that's, that's my focus. Are you back with God? You got to get that stuff right with God. And I believe there is a thing that you also need to, you know, acknowledge your leader. Acknowledge that angel of the house. And say, I messed up. I know you've been praying for me. You know, I know my parents been praying for me. Brother and sister have been praying for me. You know, I went out and did stupid. I'm sorry. That's what the church needs to do. And we're going to have long-lasting revival. This has to happen and happen again. And happen and happen again. Because any kind of good thing you got, you can look for the enemy to try to sow wicked seeds. That's why Jesus said, didn't I sow good wheat here? He said, where come these tares? He said, the enemy did this. So what I'm saying to people is, don't come around with no foolery. Pastor going to love you, pray for you, love you, hug you, encourage you. Come right here with that foolery if you want to. Y'all seen a, a progressive commercial when the little boy throwing papers and Flo says, don't bring that foolishness around here, Evan. And slap his newspaper down. I'm going to be goaltending on some people. Be knocking your stuff out there. Come around with that crazy if you want to. Because we have to be a church. The true church of God. Manifested in the earth realm. And we are to see lives change for the better. Amen. All right. Father, we thank you for the word of the Lord that's going forth unhindered by any satanic force or power. We give you praise and glory and honor for your people everywhere, the churches of God everywhere, the angels of the house everywhere, the lampstands, Father. We pray for your great mercy, your great compassion, your great healing, your great deliverance. We pray for a great move of God uh, in the earth realm, Lord. In our city, Father, in the name of Jesus, in this house, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for a time of refreshing, a time of change, a time of awakening, a time of quickening, God, in the name of Jesus, that the backslides would come home, Lord God, and somebody would be saturated with the very power and the presence of the Most High God. That you would get the glory from everything that we do. Get the glory from everything that we say that you would manifest your glory and your presence and your power your omniscience your omnipotent your omnipresence God like never before heal restore set free and make whole father in the name of Yeshua we pray we thank you for counting us worthy 
for allowing us to be a part of your kingdom and your family, the body of Christ. There's somebody out there that's not saved, Lord. They're backslidden. They're away from you. We pray for their restoration, their reconciliation back unto you, Father. That you make all things new. We thank you for loving us, blessing us, keeping us, watching over us, being merciful unto us, blessing us, causing your face to shine upon us, and giving us your shalom. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. Everybody agree with that said? Amen and amen again. All right, well, bless your heart. God is good. God is great.